All right, joined now by Andy Gresh here on the Sports Wrap. Patriots Titans fast approaching on Saturday. Gresh, what was the bigger story this week? The ESPN article and all that fallout, or the Patriots v Titans from a football perspective? Uh, it was probably what we saw with the ESPN story, the fallout, and the way everyone reacted to it, Yanni. Look, with all due respect to the Tennessee Titans, I think we think that the Patriots have a pretty good handle on beating them and that they're just another nameless, faceless team who comes into Gillette Stadium with not a ton of experience that will ultimately soil the back of their britches if they get down early in this game. To me, it was about how the Patriots were going to react as a team, as individuals. We've heard Kraft, we've heard Belichick, we've heard Brady. Brady now has another series that's coming out, mm. which I thought was interesting timing. Why didn't he just announce it last week when they were on the bye? So to me, it was clearly that ESPN story and the reaction thereafter. Uh, Brady will go to the podium tomorrow. Obviously, he's been on radio. What are you expecting uh, from that session tomorrow? I'm on to the Titans. I mean, in all the seriousness, I think it's, it's going to be like Belichick. At this point, the closer you get to the game, mm. the more they're going to be dialed in. And I think Brady will be magnanimous about it, but I think he's going to sidestep all those and said, hey, I've said all I'm going to yeah. say. Anybody want to talk football? Uh, Matt Patricia, according to the New York Daily News, the leading candidate for the New York Giants job. Uh, the tabloids were pushing Belichick to sell papers. That appears not to be the case. Does this surprise you, Patricia, over McDaniels and over another pool of candidates? Well, I'm starting to wonder if McDaniels is being so selective because ultimately the place he wants to end up is New England mm. long term. But in terms of the Giants, Man, Dave Gettleman and the personality that is Matt Patricia, I can see those guys fitting together perfectly. You know, Gettleman's got ties to New England. He's pretty much a no-nonsense kind of guy. Mm. And I think the difference here, Yanni, is that while Josh McDaniels has been a head coach, he will get another turn. I think for Matt Patricia, he's a guy who's probably only going to get one shot and one call and one opportunity to do it. And to go to the Giants, considering the build there is going to be a little longer than it is in Detroit where it's win right away, I can understand him wanting to go to the Giants and the stability and ownership. The backwards hat, kind of an aloof personality, rocket scientist. Is the New York media going to eat him up? Maybe. They'll have fun with him. But I think there's a side to Matt Patricia that people don't know. And it's very explainable. That's him. They're going to bust his chops on the whole wearing of the Goodell shirt. But at the end of the day, this guy's plenty smart. Again, Yanni, I don't know how many rocket scientists you've talked to in your day, but I think standing in a room full of people and dealing with questions, they'd be able to deal with that from a mental capacity. All right, Charlie Weiss, Romeo Cornell, Eric Mangini, on and on the list of Belichick disciples that haven't necessarily panned out. Who will be a better head coach when we look back? 20 years from now, McDaniels or Patricia or neither? I would say neither, quite honestly, uh, because, look, we're going to compare them to Belichick, right? Like, none of these guys, regardless of what they do, is ever going to be good enough on their own because we're always going to compare them to Bill. You know, when you look at Charlie, I mean, he went in there and went to a big-time bowl game his first year, and yet yeah, started to go backwards, and then Kansas was a disaster. But it's not like he didn't have any success. And look at where Romeo went. He went to Cleveland. Even Belichick couldn't have <laughs> success in Cleveland long term. So sometimes it's the situation you end up in. But we're constantly going to compare these guys to Belichick, and it, they're never going to hold up, ever, ever. We'll get into the Titans and Pats, X's and O's in our next session, uh, but I want to wrap up tonight with where do the Titans rank this Titans team as the worst opponents to come into Foxborough for a playoff game? Oh, they're, they're not Jacksonville. They're not Houston last year. They're better than some of those teams, so I don't think they're among, you know, are they bottom three all time? I don't even know if I would go there if I really started to put some thought into it. The Patriots have had some walkovers in divisional round play. Yeah. This is a pretty good football team that is built by a guy who has New England principles. So they're going to be big. We know they went out and signed corners last year. One of them, Logan Ryan from the Patriots. I don't think this is a bad football team at all. I just don't think this is a football team that is mature enough and ready for the spot they're going to be in on Saturday night. 
All right, Andy Gresh joining us tonight on the Sports Wrap. Thanks so much, Gresh, and we'll have much more coming up right after this.